to another episode of Backpack Bushcraft. This is our fourth week working in our canvas needle or cell needle series, whatever you call it, it's fine with me. And it is review time. What I have to review today is uh, a very iconic, at least in my opinion, a very iconic little green and white package that most bushcrafters have seen once or twice. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce W. Smith and Son Cell Makers Needles. So before we actually open up into this little box, there is a few things that we need to read on the outside that's going to give us a few things about how good a quality these needles truly are. Uh, well, the first things I noticed is it says, uh, manufactured by W. Smith and Son, Redditch, England. Uh, now, I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's R-E-D-D-I-T-C-H. I would say Redditch, but then again, I'm not English. But it does say England. Now... That's a little funny because for the dirts, when we got them, they said uh, European quality. In my opinion, if I was guessing, these people are saying, hey, look, we're European quality, just like the other people who are from England. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. It, maybe it's a style or the way that the Europeans made their needles. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But I did notice that, and I thought that was something worth pointing out. Uh, the next thing I see on here is it says forged and handmade. Now, in my opinion, forged and handmade means there's a human element involved. If there's a human element involved, you're going to end up with less imperfections in your product. You still may end up with some imperfections, uh, but typically you'll have a human that's witnessing it, that's approving it, uh, to, to some extent. That's at least what I'm hoping for. And for the price you're paying for these, you definitely want that human involvement. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the made by hand and not to cut the twine. That's sort of like their slogan. It's at the bottom in a fancy font. Uh, there's also another thing it says right here on the side. It says reduced edge, uh, original genuine reduced edge. Um, now, I'm going to have to get the needles out later, and that's gonna, it's going to make more sense. But basically, these needles have that wedge, that triangular wedge that the canvas needle has. Um uh, except the top or except I guess the points they're not so they're also steep they're rounded off uh that's to help not uh, fray the threads when you go in between the fabric while you're sewing that's what that's supposed to do that's what they mean by a uh, reduced edge uh i think and i'll show you what i'm talking about a little bit more later the last thing on the box i want to talk about is a set of numbers at the bottom here we have qty5 everybody knows that means quantity of five and on the other side here, we have sizes 13 through 19. Let's open up into it, and we'll get to that. What you're going to do is you're going to open this up, and you're going to have a little brown piece of paper. There's a, a little bit of difference in each one of them. It, it might be hard to tell on camera, but if you're actually holding these, there you can see a certain amount of thickness to each one. Now, there is five. I have one pulled out for a reason. I'll explain it later. But there is actually five. Um... What I have is this very large one here. Uh, the length is about the same on all of them. I think the length difference between the smallest one and the biggest one is maybe half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm not really good at estimating that. But they really do not have much of a difference in length. Uh, the biggest difference in them is the diameter of the needle itself. This is the largest needle and this is the smallest needle. I have sizes 13 through 19 in here, so I'm guessing 13, 19. I noticed that David Canterbury on his website, Self Reliance Outfitter, sells a size 14 needle from this same maker, W. Smith & Son, by itself for $2.50. And if I had to bet money, this is a size 14 needle. And the reason I'm guessing that this, between all of them, is sort of the uh, more versatile needle. It's almost the same size as the uh, 13 uh, lengthwise, uh, but it's a little bit more heftier. It's got a little bit more bulk to it. Again, I don't know. I'm just guessing. That leaves me with two other needles that could either be a 15, 16, 17, or an 18. Now, what I believe is they are a 15 being the middle one and a 17 being the one closest to 19. The reason is because when I was looking up some stuff about these, I saw in forums people referred to them in odd number increments. So, in my opinion, this makes the most sense. You have 13, 15, 17, 19 incremented cell needles, and then you have this 14, which is different, but it's a good in between uh, the, four, uh, the 13 and the 15. 
that's the only thing that makes a lot of sense to me. I have some leather over here. This is the same list leather that we used before. Uh, and if you remember, we got one to go through and it was very hard and the other one like to never could even start. So I wanted to see how well these went through leather. And if you can tell, I'm gonna start on this right corner here. This is with the 19, and I just want to see how well it will all. And man, oh man. <laughs> I did read something that you need, something called a sewing uh, a sewing palm or a leather palm or something like that. We might make one of those uh, during this video. Yeah. Needles through. Uh, and if I had a piece of uh, string or whatnot, thread of whatever kind, it would go through. Or if I was just trying to all, I have an all. Pretty impressed with that. 14. I'm going to go in the middle. This stuff is going through real easy. Before it was, you know, a time lapse to get it to go through. Last one, the 13. And yeah, all the way through. Now remember before, we only was able to get one through and it was with a lot of work and the other one wouldn't even go through. Here I have the biggest, the smallest, and the most versatile one all going through like butter. Uh, very impressed. While we have this leather here, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to make what's called a leather pawn. I'm going to talk about my process what I'm going to do. And this is something neat about it is I'm going to be making it for my needles. I'm going to use my needles to make it. Cut my leather here. I just want a piece that's a little bit bigger than my palm. And again, this is all coming off the top of my head. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the biggest size needle I caught. So what we got here is three holes on each end. I got some bank lines, so I'm gonna use to sew it up with. And all I'm gonna do is just cut the end so I can fray it apart. Now you could use paracord. You could use the strands of paracord. I'm then gonna put this through my 19. Now, once I have it through, if I'm lucky and I'm careful, I should be able to get it to stop at that knot. It did. I can then pull the other end out. And I don't have to worry about this coming loose. Now I want to keep the thread in the eye still, and I want to go straight across. Now, once I have it all the way through here, what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to tie another knot, just in the end here. All I got to do is just sit you down on my hand, like that. I'll have probably three others or whatever, and we'll go ahead and finish up the other holes. I'll show you when it's done. For now, this will work. And, ooh, yeah, that fits good. I can switch, can put it on my left hand, can put it on my right hand. Main thing, it ain't hurt my hand no more. Yeah, I mean, you can feel it. It, it did gouge it just a little bit. But then again, I got a whole lot of leather to work with. <clears throat> All right, well, now that we've uh, seen how well they work with leather, let's try them on some canvas, sort of what they're uh, known for. What I have here is the number 14 with a little bit of paracord. I'm not even tied it off at the end. I'm just gonna put a running stitch through this and see how well it does. <laughs> Nice, nice grouping. I'm happy with it. 19, this is that upholstery thread. See how well this works. Let's pull it on through here. Uh, yeah, the hole's a little bit big for this stuff, so probably would want to go with 14. Probably maybe the 15, though. It's about all the threading material I got. I could try the jute. Now, if this jute is successful, what that's going to tell us is that we can make natural cordage and use it. Guys, we finally got jute this to This thing work. has all, you know, dug holes and leather. This thing is sewn uh, with every type of material I've given it so far. They have all done very well. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to see if it can become a redundant compass or we need to see if we can magnetize this. Doing this today, I did notice something and I want to point it out to you guys. If you're picking a battery to do this method, and I know a lot of people prefer to do it with magnets. I'd like to do it with magnets. I, can't, I just can't get a hold of magnets right now. If you want to do this with battery, get Duracell. Here's why. Here's my compass and the brown end or the copper end is the positive end. This thing follows it around. If you can see it, sort of see it, it'll, it'll come right to it every time. Positive end, it repels it. Okay? The other end, 
it sort of pulls it, but is not as good as good a pull as the deer cell. Needle number 14, 50 strikes. I'll meet you back when I'm done. Okay, so we've had to modify it a little bit. I don't think I had enough stripes in it. It's, it's just about parallel. So here's our needle. And here's my new invention. Uh, this is just a bottle cap. All I did was cut a groove into the ridge so it will hold my needle. Let's let this float around until it stops and see what we get after that. Oh, I love these things. Guys, these needles uh, continue to amaze me. Um, after compass, what else can you do with them? Some type of pick, clean your nails, clean your teeth. You can also use it to as a cleaning pick for your equipment and other gear. Going into the hunting fishing realm, gig, you could use it as uh, a killing or pinning device and a windlass. In the camp uh, kitchen, you could use this to hold down the fish while you scale it. Heck, you use this to hold down the fish while you, while you do scale it with a different one. Uh, you could just use it to test bread doughs. You could use it as a toggle for different things, especially the 19th. But uh, definitely great around the camp kitchen. Well, all that leaves us is our final thoughts. And I haven't done a packing, so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Final thoughts. These are going to set you back $12.99. They're very expensive. These will set you back $1.77, $2.00, bucks, something like that. You're going to get two decent needles out of that set, maybe three if you can figure out how to work a few of them. You're going to get five very, very good quality needles out of this. If you're just getting into bushcraft, if you're just starting to say, well, if I need to buy some type of canvas needle, go with the, go with the cheaper option, the, the more inexpensive option. That way you got something in your kit you can work with. And once you've used it for a while and you want to upgrade, you want to get to the big quality stuff so you can appreciate it better, Definitely check out W. Smith and Sub when you're ready. Uh, it's fantastic. And another way you can think about this, this gives you a set of five. Now, these, each one of these is a little bit different, but overall, they're very similar. They all do about the same job. I believe it would be very easy just to break up the set, put one in each pack if you have five different uh, packs you want to keep with you, uh, or maybe split them, you know, group them in pairs if you want to just take, if you want to split them against two different packs and take the 14 and put in a solid third pack uh that would be fine too i think either way uh would definitely be worth your money now for the packing we have our backpack here it's, it's just slightly off camera say hello backpack hello backpack uh but he's just right here off, off the camera uh, so what we're going to be uh adding into our backpack this week was we are going to go with the smith and son because i have been using canvas seals for a while and i want a good set uh, the next thing we're going to be adding to it is the bottle cap floating device. Um, the next thing I'm going to take is I'm going to take that upholstery thread. Uh, also, I also have a thin board here. So the next thing I want to uh, put in there is the sewing palm that we made. Uh, again, I don't know what a sewing palm looks like. And guys, that will do it for the, the canvas sail needle series. I've had a blast through this series. I think I say that at the end of every series. I really do. I, 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 it's just, they just keep getting more fun and more fun and more fun. Um, next week we will be doing a um, uh, cargo tape. I'm really excited for that. We're gonna have a lot of cool stuff to show you. I get show you some of my favorite brands. I do have my favorite brand of cargo tape. Of course I do. But you don't want to miss that. And to make sure you don't miss it, you need to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, Backpack Bushcraft. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gmail at Backpack Bushcraft. You can also uh, go on my website where I post a blog every Sunday night, 10 p.m. EST. And I also have a comic that comes out on Wednesdays around lunchtime, 12 p.m. EST. And that website is www.backpackbushcraft.com. And until next time, guys, keep those fires burning and put it along. Right